Good morning, St. Thomas More Knights. Today is Orange Shirt Day. Students and staff across Canada join together to commemorate residential schools by wearing an orange shirt. Orange Shirt Day is a legacy of the St. Joseph Mission Residential School and grew out of Phyllis Webstad's story, whose orange sweater was taken from her on her first day of school. This was a sweater of love and pride given to Phyllis by her grandmother. Today is a reminder for us to focus on reconciliation, anti-racism, and anti-bullying. It is also an opportunity for Indigenous peoples, local governments, schools, and communities to come together in the spirit of reconciliation and hope for generations of children to come. Wearing an orange shirt is a symbol of our commitment to raise awareness of the residential school system, promote reconciliation, and to ensure that every child matters. If you'll join me in the sign of our faith as we say our orange shirt day prayer in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God of love, you have gifted us with so many different ways of learning and being. We are grateful for the many cultures and languages of our world. It is a beautiful work of art. Help us to especially walk forward in faith with our brothers and sisters of the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit communities. Help us to be part of a new and respectful relationship that honors the true history of Canada's first peoples. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus, our brother, who walks with us all. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Folks, just a, a word from administration. I would ask that you use the washrooms closest to your classroom and to remember to use your mask at every location on campus. So we want to see that you're wearing that mask wherever you are on campus. Have a wonderful day. Peace be with you and a happy feast day of St. Therese of Lisieux, or the Low Flower, as she's called. Friends, as you have heard, the Orange Shirt Day, along with the Black Lives Matters or the Pink Shirt Day, are very sad and painful reminders of how humans treat other humans. Every child matters. Today, I would like to bring to our attention those who cannot speak for and about themselves, and namely the unborn. One of the ways I and you can be their voice is life chain. And life chain is a silent, non-confrontational public witness and reminder to all of us that babies continue to be killed. And this event will take place this Sunday, October 4th, from 2.30 to 3.30 at the corner of Mohawk and Upper James. And there, participants simply hold signs as a public witness to the gift of human life to raise awareness about abortion and pray silently for an end to abortion. This is not just a mere social gathering, so all the uh, rules about safety and health and safety are being uh, maintained. So please join us. Uh, more information you can find on LMS. Thank you and have a blessed day, everyone. Good morning, St. Thomas More. A couple of announcements from Student Services regarding booking an appointment with your guidance counselor. The online booking system opens up at the end of every Friday for students to book an appointment with their counselor for the following week. So tomorrow at 3 p.m., students will be able to book an appointment for next week through the online booking system. This will continue for the duration of this semester. Next week's appointments will be for students who require a change to their Block 2 course only. After next week, there will be no further changes to your Block 2 class. Changes to any other block or any Semester 2 changes can be made after Term 2 begins. Please also remember to book with your grade level counselor at, or your appointment may be cancelled. Finally, a reminder to please wait to be called down for your appointment before coming down to guidance. Thanks STM and have a great day. Good morning staff and students at St. Thomas More. Today has been designated as Romans Law Day. In March of 2018, the Ontario government passed a law known as Romans Law designed to protect athletes and to educate parents, guardians, coaches, and officials about the dangers of head injuries. It is the first law of its kind in Canada and will benefit athletes and non-athletes. Romans Law is also about education by increasing concussion awareness and knowledge. 
We can change Ontario's culture around sports, physical activity, and injury. Romans Law will make it easier for those who experience concussions to speak up, get the help they need, and take the time that is necessary for recovery. With the support of everyone around them, concussions aren't always obvious. Signs and symptoms can take hours or even days to appear. Speak up about a bump on your head or how they checked out. Students playing sports for school teams must inform their coaches if they have a concussion while playing in the sports leagues outside of school. Hi, I'm Mike Evans and I'm a doctor and I've got three kids, Willa, Finn and Angus. And they're like a lot of kids, they like to play sports, they're a bit accident prone. So why am I telling you this? Well, I wanted to talk to you about a thing that tends to happen to kids that uh, do play sports or have the, even just have the occasional accident. You've probably heard about it before because of a guy named Sidney Crosby or other famous people. And you see them on TV and they look fine. I mean, they aren't wearing casts or, or going for surgery, but they're telling you they're not fine. So today I wanted to talk to you about, you guessed it, concussions. Concussions 101. So let's start with the basics. What is a concussion? So a concussion is a knock on the head where you usually have some other stuff going on. So it could be a headache, confusion, blurry vision, feeling sick to your stomach, just or even just generally feeling weird. These are all signs that the brain's been disturbed a bit. You might even have gotten knocked out, and you don't have to lose consciousness to actually have a concussion. Um, but these are all things that can, can happen that shows that the brain's been disturbed. So, so what's different about a concussion? Well, I think three things. So firstly, the brain sits inside the skull. So when you smash it, it's actually most oftentimes protected. But sometimes if you hit it hard enough, the brain hits the inside of the skull and it can actually get bruised. And if you hit it hard enough, it can actually swing back or rotate and uh, get bruised on the other side of your brain. Secondly, when you twist your ankle or bang your knee, you might see some bruising or scrapes or swelling on the outside, but this isn't the case with your brain. It gets injured and nobody really knows. Thirdly, your brain is like mission control. It controls things like your balance, your mood, your sleep, your thinking, and your senses. So when it gets injured, there can be lots of things that can happen. So we discussed some of the classic ones before, like uh, headaches or neck pain or balance problems or blurry vision. But you also might have some symptoms that you may not have felt before, like being in a fog, finding it hard to concentrate, feeling sad, or, or having lots of anxiety or worrying more than usual. You may even have trouble sleeping, um, or maybe even just you're more sensitive to light or noise or just other people. Also, your brain holds on to lots of different files or memories. And sometimes when your brain gets rocked a bit, it's like, it's like a file cabinet that gets knocked over and the files get spilt onto the floor and thoughts get scrambled and sometimes the memory files just get lost so you might not even remember the accident or even that afternoon. So now we know more about what a concussion is, I want to get you to think about three other things. So number one is we don't want to make things worse. We know because the brain is hidden. We can see if there's a fracture in your skull or a bleed, but we can't even we can't see a concussion even with some of the cool machines we have now, like CT scans or MRIs. Mm. And we know if you injure your brain before it is healed, things get much worse. So we follow a protocol, a kind of official procedure, and we call it return to activity. So what we want you to do is just start, and if you have no symptoms or no, none of the things that I talked about at rest, then you can kind of go on to the next stage. And, and you can go for some light exercise like a jog. And if there's no problems there, you can go on to, um, if it was hockey, you could uh, uh, go skating. Um, and then we allow you to be yellow shirted if there's no symptoms. Uh, so what I mean by that is that uh, you can participate in a practice, but nobody can come into contact with you. And then if that works out, then you can go to a full contact practice. And if that works out, then you can return to play. So Sidney Crosby has gone through all these stages. And now we're just hoping that uh, he can hit the final stage, which is return to play. But if you have any symptoms or any problems with any of these levels, you have to drop down to the level before. And that's where you can get stuck sometimes. Um, so number two I wanted to talk to you about was it's very hard to know uh, how you will do. So when you have a concussion, 
It's important to know that with all the kind of negative news we've been hearing about concussions, that actually 80 to 90% are back in four to six weeks. The tricky part, though, is it's hard to tell at the beginning. Sometimes people have kind of a light injury and they have lots of problems, and sometimes the reverse is true. So like any other injury, it can be a bit frustrating. So you do have to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. The third point, and my final point, is about communication about talking with your parents, teachers, coaches, trainers, and friends, because it's hard to see concussions. People presume you're okay. So you need to be upfront about how you're feeling. Things like being in a fog or being anxious can be hard to put a finger on. So you don't need to dwell on it, but you do need to be clear and honest about how you're feeling. So take care of yourself if you have a concussion. Your brain is you. Everything you have got good at from riding a bicycle to playing soccer stored in there. All your memories, like a family trip or winning something, are stored in there. All your skills about figuring things out for school or, or even in life are built into your brain, so you want to keep them running like a Ferrari. So make sure you're clear to return to activity. Keep positive and share any concerns or questions you have with the people that care about you. And take care of that awesome brain of yours. Thanks. Now here's a message from your peer leaders and Ms. Sambuco regarding how to wear your mask properly and a brief introduction of who they are. That's my real name. Hey, I'm Sabrina. Hey, I'm Biada. Hi, I'm Mia. Yo, I'm Natalie. Hi, I'm Ms. Sambuco and we're your peer leaders. to stop wearing your mask below your nose. It's not cute. It's making everyone around you uncomfortable. No one wants to see that. Just wear your mask properly. A message from your peer leaders. Those are all of the announcements for today, STM. The time is now 8.45. Have a great day.